winning bidder in a recent online auction for the box. He agreed to pay more than five million Canadian dollars for it. Well-known company Dave and Adams Card World put out a bounty for one million dollars on the card. There is a ton of card content out there right now, both good and bad. So each week, I'm gonna siphon through it and pick the best three, what I think are the top three card content clips of the week and give some hobby love. I was just going to get drunk and watch The Grinch, so I'll be there. I have three excellent clips for you today. The first one is by The Score. The Score produces a lot of sports content, but they're not a car channel whatsoever. They have 182,000 subscribers on YouTube. This video, as of me recording it, was released 13 days ago. By the time you see it, it'll be closer to 18 or 19 days ago, and it has just under 40,000 views. It's a pretty good topic, and the video is will produce pretty well. The score has uh, money behind them. They're um, a established company. Uh, again, 182,000 subscribers, the top five missing sports cards. So we all know Connor Bedard is one of the newest and biggest names in hockey. But just in case you're not a sports fan when it comes to hockey cards, everyone is after the Upper Deck Young Guns card. It's considered to be a player's first official rookie card. We're about to geek out right now, so try to keep up. The Upper Deck Series 2 box that features Bedard's Young Gun cards was just released in early March. Now, including parallels, there are 44 different Bedard cards in the product. Each box box basically features six Young Gun cards and boxes are selling for roughly $300 a piece. And yes, there are different variations of Young Gun cards specifically, some more rare than others. Some are fetching hundreds of dollars, others thousands of dollars, and one red outburst Bedard just sold for 17,000 Canadian for a piece of cardboard just because it's rare. But there's a gold outburst card, serial numbered one of one, and that's the ultimate chase card. Well-known company Dave and Adams Card World put out a bounty for $1 million on the card. The only requirement, the card must be in great condition. So must grade like a PSA 9. And not every card is pristine when you open it from a pack. There's a massive premium put on rookie cards. We've seen John ja Morant and Zion, Kate Cunningham, and even the Wemby was just hit. But somehow, some way, the Luka Doncic 2018 Black Prism one of one has not surfaced. Arguably the second or third best player in that draft class, Trey Young, even his Black Prism one of one has surfaced, but no Luca. One of the biggest collectors in the hobby known as Shine put out a bounty of $1.5 million on the card last year. Well, the card has not shown up anywhere and it's either sitting in someone's collection or it's still in a box. One hobby conspiracy theory out there is that the card has been pulled by a collector who also owns a bunch of sealed boxes. So to prevent the prices of the boxes from going down, he or she hasn't come forward. Probably why box of 2018-19 Prism Basketball are fetching roughly three to four thousand dollars per. FYI, the box was roughly two hundred dollars when it first came out. Damn it, where's my time machine? It's a very interesting video, good topic, and well done by the score. And if you want to see the other top five missing cards deemed by them, well, check it out. The link will be in the comments below. Doesn't your work mean anything to you anymore? Have you no sense of pride in what you do? No sense of duty? No sense of destiny. I'm looking for generals. What do I got? Foot soldiers. The second clip I have for you today, well, it's not a sports car channel at all. It's by CBS Saskatchewan. That's right, in Canada. They have 22,000 subscribers, and this video is absolutely worth watching. It's only three minutes, so I think we'll just watch the entire video together, and I'll comment afterwards because it's an interesting story. And uh, I don't know, hockey seems to be finding itself with Connor Bedard and this story uh, more in the uh, zeitgeist. I think it's a, an amazing uh, item. It's, it's been called the holy grail of hockey card memorabilia. That holy grail is an unopened box of 1979 Opeechee hockey cards discovered recently by a Regina family while cleaning their home. It's believed to contain as many as 25 Wayne Gretzky rookie cards. Toronto real estate agent Jack Arshosky was the winning bidder in a recent online auction for the box. He agreed to pay more than five million Canadian dollars for it. I actually needed like four Red Bulls to keep me focused and sharp because every time a new bid uh, was entered, it would reset at 30 minutes in the extended period of time. So it was very possible that I almost missed um, winning the bid on this because it wrapped up like after 1 a.m. Toronto time. That was nearly two months ago. 
The cards remain in the vault at the auction house's Texas facility. Arshosky said he's paid most of the money, but not all. And now he's not sure if he wants to keep the cards. I realized that I wasn't so passionate about, you know, the hockey cards and that I realized that there are others out there that are much more passionate about this. And I, um, I started a journey, I guess, to find, I think, what would be a better home for these cards. He sent messages to Wayne Gretzky, to Edmonton Oilers owner Daryl Katz, to poker pro Daniel Negrano, to Canadian rapper Drake and many others. He says none of them have responded. I just want to give these cards to somebody who will really appreciate it and they'll get the most uh, happiness from it. Um, and I don't want anything... Uh, you know, I don't want anything additional for myself than what was uh, the winning bid for these uh, credit for these um, hockey cards. A Regina sports card dealer says this story keeps getting more interesting. He says it might be a case of buyer's remorse. So it sounds like the, there's a bit of a financial crunch there, and he's looking to he bit off maybe more than he can chew, and he's looking to, um, you know, find a, a, a well, basically resell them in order to. Uh, to fulfill the, the purchase. A U.S. card expert says he's never seen anything like this. Just a very unusual situation. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what the resolution will be, but I think the, the buyer, um, you know, doesn't sound like he wants it um, at this point. And I don't think, uh, you know, even though the auction house typically is very serious about collecting money. They don't want this type of situation ever uh, for any amount of money. Haney and Muller say the box and Gretzky rookie cards like this one could increase in value in the coming years, but they're unlikely to fetch a much higher price so soon after a major auction. They say the situation could be tricky for everyone involved. It is tricky for everyone involved in the three minutes I just saw. Comment below, what do you think? Where do you stand on this? Should the dude have to pay up? and uh, own his purchase, or is it just best that we put this thing up for auction again? A weird story, interesting, and I know some of you have had stuff like this happen to you on a much less level, let alone a over million dollar purchase. Again, this channel was CBS Saskatchewan, not a car channel, but I'll put the link of this video in the description below. The coolest thing about my classroom is that when it's pitch black or dark, you get a, get a real good shot the Las Vegas Strip. Well, you can see the environment uh, has changed just a bit. I changed uh, what the third video was from earlier when I recorded it. So PSA, eBay, and Golden all had some big news this week. And I tried to look for the best content that did the best job of explaining it. it happened to come from a comic book channel named Swagglehoss, if I'm pronouncing it right, has 21,000 subscribers. We're just gonna watch a couple minutes of the video and let him describe the news. Again, eBay acquires Golden, sells Vault to collectors. In a long rumored move, collectible marketplace Golden has been sold to eBay by Collectors Holdings, co-owned by New York Mets owner Steve Cohen. Concurrently, eBay has sold its Vault to collectors, the parent company of card grading giant PSA. The article continues to go on to explain what Golden's auctions is, you know, how it had a Netflix show, the king of collectibles, uh, da da da, and how there's been a bunch of investment and growth uh, ever since, uh, you know, COVID in the collectible space. Um, you guys, I'm sure, are pretty aware of, you know, Golden Auctions, just another one of the auction houses out there. Uh, one of the bigger ones, I mean, I would say that they're, you know, definitely not as big as Heritage. They're definitely not, you know, as as used as frequently within the comic book space, uh, say, like a Comic Link or a Comic Connect. But they're definitely one of the big players uh, in the card world, in the sports memorabilia world. And there are often comic book sales on Golden Auctions as well. Uh, they used to be owned by PSA. Now they are being acquired by eBay. And meanwhile, on the flip side, PSA is acquiring eBay's vault. Now I thought he broke down the news well. For me, I want to start seeing news that represents collectors or us, the people that are investing or buying into the hobby. We love it. You know, but all the news you see is these bigger companies positioning themselves to profit off of us. So the guy did a good video go watch the rest if you haven't seen all the news it does come from a comic book angle so it's a bit different but interesting to see the difference between cards and comics and um what's the norm in both 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, as always, please hit the like button so I know to make more like this. I'm going to release this video every Saturday morning. This is, what, the fourth now, so it's been a month. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. This is not my neighborhood, but it's a nice neighborhood. Have a good day. Every week, I'm going to highlight the best three videos or content creators I think uh, had a good week, and look out for your video to be on there. Shh. What's in there? What's in there? Right, right now, we will be what, silent. What is it, a box of chocolates? Biggest card you can hit oh in the entire product. My gosh. Oh my goodness. I thought the Drew Aller was good. I am shaking. I do not do much baseball. Speechless. That's probably one of the best hits of my entire life. Dude, I am shaking. Oh my I to go gosh. to the store. I went up to the counter. I bought two extra boxes. This pack right here. Um, it was in there. And I knew, like, it's life-changing. It, my heart was racing. My, like, hands were shaking. I was like, no way. Then you read the one of one, and I'm like, no, this can't be real. Meeting Post Malone was, like, I, I can't even, like, a year ago, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine this, you know? And... One thing led to another, and you saw the video. I, I, I did not expect that. It happened so fast, like I can't even tell you. It was, it was amazing. It was two million US. I'm just an average person. Be a red trifold book. We're hoping it's Mahomes. Mahomes. Oh, oh it's, it's autoed. It's autoed. It's autoed. <laughs> oh! Brian, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I'm shaking in my custom baby seal leather boot. What up, everybody? This is Robert Ory, a.k.a. Big Shot Bob, and you're watching Professional Sports Cards. Hey, by the way, go buy my rookie card.